Hey everybody, this is Brent in Central Arkansas. Today we are going to hand pollinate some squash because I don't have very many pollinators and we're going to do a harvest on some of the squash as well. So a quick little tutorial on the difference between a male and a female squash flower. This one's a male because there's no baby fruit. This one's a female because there's a baby fruit behind it. The females look like that on the inside and the males have a pointier <laughs> appendage. And uh, I'm going to show you um, how I do it and the first thing we're going to do in the process is to make some um, pollinating ghosts. Let me show you that. Okay, so let's take some male flowers completely out. Here's one now, what it looks like. Let me grab another one over here. Another fine example. All right, let me show you how I make a pollinating ghost. I take a flower, this is a male, and I pull it down. This is going to provide the pollen for the female. I start to pull it apart down at the bottom here, and I did this so that I could have a handle on the male while I pollinate with it. So that's the first ghost. Let me show you another one. Just take and pull it apart down to the base. Start to spread it like that. This one did really well. And there you go. Another pollinating ghost. All right, here's some pollinating ghosts. This is enough to get started. And basically, this is the male with the pollen attached. Let me show you a little bit of what that looks like. You can see that on my finger. It comes off real easy. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna touch this to the female part of the flower. I'll show you that in just a second. But the reason why we're doing this is because I have not seen any pollinators out here, not a single bee anywhere. And I, I see hoverflies, but they're not real great at pollinating. I'd rather have bees, but there's just no bees. So I'm getting a lot of fruit that's dying back because it's not getting pollinated. So we can't have that. That's a waste. So I have to come out here and hand pollinate, unfortunately. You can even see a little hoverfly right there. Um, the best time to pollinate, hand pollinate, a squash is in the morning. Uh, after the dew dries off, probably after 8 o'clock to around noon. You don't want to go past noon because the pollen starts dying. So um, every day you'll have, um, if you have a good set of squash, you'll have uh, male flowers and female flowers that open up and they only last a day. So um, that's the reason why you need to do it in the mornings. Um, make sure you get the best pollination and get that squash fertilized so it'll start growing. All right, this is a typical, very typical uh, Madison's Cross plant. You can see down here, I've got a harv uh, harvestable squash right here. I got one that'll be, that was harvested, or that was pollinated yesterday right here. And you can see that flower is starting to uh, die back, close up, it'll start to die back. And then that one will be ready probably tomorrow the next day. But I also have here a female that's completely open. I'll show you that. Let me take you over, get you a little better view of what the female looks like. The female has a baby on it. It's always easy to tell. Most cucurbits are this way, whether it's a cucumber or a melon 
or a squash like this. And squash also includes your winter squashes like butternuts. That's a type of squash. So that's what the female looks like. It's got kind of a envelope looking, well, it looks like that. <laughs> so I'm gonna take my pollinated ghost here and all I'm going to do is, you can even tear the flower if you want, it's not cruel, is I'm gonna take and rub it on the flower, the female parts of the flower, right here, just like that, until all that male pollen is stuck to it. And off of the male. And that's pretty much it. Now this male ghost is done. Let me see if I can bring you in a little closer and show you what it looks like. Sorry for the ruffling. See if you can see that male pollen sticking to it. So, yeah. Pretty neat, huh? There are quite a few Madison's Cross ready to harvest. I'll show you some of that, but we've got some over here. This is Kavili. It's supposed to be part of the carpet, and uh, it just doesn't seem to be so far. <laughs> None of them are growing out. Um, so we'll see on those but none of them are ready you got one there that might be ready in a couple days if it'll go ahead and start growing this is um golden glory zucchini and they're also not growing you got one there that's kind of misshapen but they're not ready yet i've got some of Christmas here and I got a couple pollinated there and they'll be ready in the next couple days but they're not ready um, not a whole lot uh, on Christmas at all the last remaining summer squash I have here is early prolific and the only one I see that will be ready is in a couple a day or two is that one the rest are just now starting to get pollinated I did have some smaller fruit like with Madison's Cross that didn't get pollinated so obviously those aren't going to grow but it looks like one's down there that'll be ready in a day or two so that's what's going on with the squash by variety the rest are butternuts on the back row and those cannot cross pollinate with summer squash summer squash is a C. pepo genus and butternut squash or a machada see machada cucurbis something something machada anyway the two species won't cross uh well they can gen people have done it in labs and whatnot but anyway not naturally so let's get down to business here and uh take some of this madison's cross and then we're gonna have some nice beautiful wonderful squash for the first time this year tonight It's about seven inch squash right there. I'll take that one. Another one that's about, yep, seven inches as well. up a little bit because it's uh, tight and where I cut it to the plant I want to make sure I don't cut anything I shouldn't another one is about the same length about seven inches
this one. Uh, I'll go ahead and take it. I could probably go another day or so. It's long enough. It's just not fat like the others. They're all really uniform. I'll show you a final picture. Of course I say that and then this one comes along. <laughs> it's got a little bit of a funkiness to the neck right here. And it probably could go another day. We'll take this last one here. It's a little small too, but we'll go ahead and take it. <laughs> Just a little bit. All right, here is the squash harvested. Get off there, bug. I split one down the middle because I wanted to see, want you to see what this squash is about. One of the things I bred for. One is it is really a dense squash. It is not watery like early prolific or some of the others you may get. Let me make sure you're in the camera here. So I'll talk behind it. Well, I can't do that. So anyway, um, one of the things you can see here is this squash is, my hand is seven inches from base to tip and it's about six and a half inches. But one of the things that you can see about it here is there is hardly any seeds at all. And while that makes it a little bit difficult to save seeds it makes the product really really nice it's not seedy at all it's very very meaty and uh, that's one of the things that I bred for I took uh, and kept smaller cavities um, squash and just perpetuated that just took the next grow or the next um, line of breeding from the ones that are smaller denser and had the great flavor that I liked so that's a typical one at harvest time they can get bigger, they can get, um, I would say, eight to 10 inches long and they'll still have a small seed cavity and taste great. In fact, if you let these things grow to absolute full maturity, I mean full maturity, where the skin is so hard you, can, you can't put a fingernail in it, they will last for months and then you can peel them and use them like in a, as a potato substitute. I've done that as well because they won't go bad. That's, that's the really neat thing about these squash, and they're, they're great tasting too, really great tasting. Nice and sweet, they caramelize, caramelize really nicely. I love this squash, I love this breeding. This is the first harvest for us, we're going to have some good eating tonight. This is Brent, you guys. We'll see you later. Did you know you can subscribe to me? Check it out. Click right here on the subscribe button. See that? It's got a little check next to it. If you click on the little bell to the right of it, it'll bring up a little notification that says send me all notifications to the channel every time I make a video. Click save. You'll get an email notification that I have made a new video. This is for those who don't know. Thanks for watching. You guys take care.